them to the floor. Well, the people in uh, Paris weren't forced to the floor. Their pieces flew all over the stadium. The dance hall, rather. And we're worried about Miss Fatima going to the floor, you hear? Guns trained on her. Nine months later, she learned he was among three suicide bombers near the Stade de France. Bilal Hadfi, who French authorities say was nearly continuously on the phone with the suspected mastermind, Vermin, Muslim Vermin, for 40 minutes before the first detonation on November 13th, blew himself up, blah, blah, blah. The mother said, what's the hardest is that for the first nine months we didn't see him? For four months we had no news of him. Oh, and thanks God. He blew himself up outside of my door. <laughs> because Paris is far and near at the same time. I wonder all the time if he suffered. I'm proud that he had no victim, she told the TV station. She said Islamic extremists took advantage of her son after he grew disaffected by this really going to blow a fuse. This, this is going to cost me a fuse. Discrimination in Belgium? They go back to, to your mud house in uh, Morocco. Go back to your mud hut in Morocco. There's no welfare there. There's no discrimination. You all look the same, right? Everyone treats each other the same in Morocco. You all live in mud huts, except the rich in Morocco. You hear always the discrimination. Discrimination. He became disaffected by discrimination in Belgium. Hey, when I grew up, I was an immigrant son. I had a lot of discrimination. I was picked on. I was ridiculed. Believe me. All it did was make me smarter and stronger. I didn't plan on blowing anyone up. I said I'll outsmart them. I'll do better than they in the long run. You work harder. You don't blow people up, Fatima. That's my religion. What's your religion, Fatima? Blow people up who are better than you? Blow people up who have nicer shoes, nicer wives, and nicer cars? Cars, Fatima? That's what you taught your son? She had no warning that he had fallen in with Islamic extremists. When he gave up smoking pot and drinking, she thought at the time it was a good thing. Oh, yeah, right. Let me tell you something. In this case, I'd recommend pot and drinking. Would have kept them down on the farm. Whenever you see one of these radicals, then they get pulled in like the, the, like the black Muslims in the jails. What do you think is any different here? What do you think it's any different here? What's going on in the prisons? Another secret uh, army being built in America. But don't dare say anything about that. All religions are sacred. All religions are equal. All religions are equal in America. That is our First Amendment right. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion. Really, is that correct? You think all religions are equal? Not in my book. Not in my book. Some, some religions aren't even religions. They're political organizations disguised as religions to invade a nation like a Trojan horse. No, not all religions are equal. Stop being a moron. When is your preacher last taught you to go blow somebody up if they didn't become a good a good Catholic? When did your rabbi tell you to go blow somebody up if they uh, didn't become a good Jew? When? Never. Never. Maybe not for a thousand years. No, not all religions are equal, not in this time and, and not in this age. And the day you come to understand that all the rules of the past, all your refined liberal views, everything you've been stuffed down your head by the school moms and the ninnies has to be discarded, and you have to start fresh. And only when you start fresh and open your eyes to what's really going on and you see the trail of blood being left by one religion, can you hope? To defeat this infection. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth and financial future. Call 1-800-289-26. Talking about losing the war on terror to the infection of radical Islam. And how Obama's not really fighting the war. We're talking about what needs to be done in America to change the mindset of this stupid nation of ours, where the people have been brainwashed for so long, they have no idea what's going on, nor what must be done. Now, are you ready now? I'm talking in a nice modulated tone. You ready? Here comes old Dentist Savage now getting out the drill. We're doing some root canal. You ready now? Settle back because this is going to hurt. Samuel L. Jackson, you know him, that bad actor. The black bad actor, he says, I really wanted the San Bernardino killers to be white. 
actor Samuel L. Jackson lamented that Muslims have become the new young black men and admitted that he really wanted the San Bernardino terrorists to be white so as not to bring more scrutiny toward Muslims. Can you believe that you would go to a movie with this racist in it? Why would anyone, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, gay, or straight, pay 10 cents to ever watch anything this racist pig performs in? Now, of course, he's in a new movie produced by a cop hater, Quentin Tarantella, whatever his name is. And they're calling Donald Trump a, a candidate running on a platform of hate. This guy says he wanted the San Bernardino murderers to be white. You know, the Muslim murderers. And you'll go to his movie? I'm going to vote for Hillary Clinton, he said to the, uh, I don't know what it is, some newspaper in Hollywood, Hollywood Review. I mean, I love Bernie Sanders. There's a Ultimately, I want to see every single woman in this country covered from head to toe. I want to see the hand of the thief cut. I want to see adultery stoned to death. I want to see Sharia law in Europe. And I want to see it in America as well. I believe our patrols are a means to an end. This, this is the um, virus of radical Islam walking the streets of London, a city I am banned from entering because of the cowardly mud pies who run the country. The, the cowardly mud puddings who the British have elected permit this piece of garbage to walk his streets and say he wants hands cut off for thievery, he wants to stone adulterers to death, and he wants all women covered. He's allowed to walk around London. Yours truly, Michael Savage, is banned from England because of the gooseberry liver that passes for a prime minister. But now it gets even better. Here we have our own clown show of haters and stupid people. Sanders, of course, I mean, Colonel Sanders is more interesting to me than, uh, than Bernie Sanders, to be honest. At least Colonel Sanders produced a product, while this one is nothing but a product. Here's the schmuck talking about global warming in clip 13. You gotta hear this one. Play 13. Why is it that we're not effectively addressing uh, the fact that climate change is absolutely real? I am in Burlington, Vermont right now. Nobody can recall uh, a Christmas Eve the likes of which we have seen with a temperature of 65 degrees. And what the scientists are telling right, us... You get the whole picture. I, I am in Burlington, Burlington, Vermont. Nobody can recall a Christmas Eve the likes of which we have seen with a temperature of 65 degrees. No one can recall... Who, who your liberal friends are on stone out of their mind, they can recall? Here, Bernie, hey, Bernie, Christmas Eve 1955 was warmer, Bernie. Did you know that? But you were still living in New York at that time, weren't you, Bernie? You still in New York? A commie? Yeah, yeah, Christmas Eve 1955 was much warmer, Bernie. Three-fourths of the country was over 60 degrees in Ashland, Kansas. Gary, Oklahoma, and... And Encinal, Texas, were all over 90 degrees. Christmas Eve, 1955. Fort Lauderdale was 85 degrees. But, you know, you don't want to listen to facts. You see, I found something out about liberals. They are the, amongst the stupidest people on the planet. Their minds are made up. Calm down, climate kooks. Christmas Eve has been much warmer. Real science is annoyed at Drudge for going along with the hype. They said Drudge is touting the record heat forecast for Christmas Eve, even though most of the country will be below normal temperature. The best drudge could come up with was 86 degrees at Orlando. Matt's a friend of mine, but the fact of the matter is this was all hype. Christmas Eve 1955 was much warmer. Much warmer. Much warmer. Much warmer. Liberal establishmentarians, they write, were tearing clots of hair from their scalps as they yelped about the coming Ice Age 20 years ago. 20 years from now, we'll probably be hearing the same thing. But you, you see, you don't want to look at the temperatures. Last year, the East Coast had record cold. That was ignored because it was less than 1% of the Earth. But this week, the eastern U.S. defines global climate because it's warmer. You see how the propaganda works, Robert? You get this? You know, I, I told you I met someone I had a conversation with here, an iconic actor, politically sane, right-wing guy. Actually, he's not even right-wing. He's just not a psycho-liberal like all of the rest of the Hollywood phonies. The drug addicts. So he was saying, you know, I told him about the new book, Government Zero, and he said, I, I haven't read it. I said, well, my chapter on zero science discusses one thing that you can present to your liberal friends here in Hollywood. Show them about the Vostok ice core samples, and I explained it to him. He said, Michael, I want your book, but I found something out. He said, they don't listen. I'm talking about one of the most famous actors in the world. You'd recognize his name in a millisecond, but I'm not going to use it. 
He knows everybody. Everyone knows him. He tries to talk with them about reason, with reason, about these subjects. They don't want to hear it. All they want to listen to is this 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 two faced liar, Bernie Sanders, about nobody could recall a, a a Christmas Eve the likes of which we have, where the temperatures were sixty five degrees. And what the scientists are telling us, the scientist, a scientist, a hooker on Ellis Street is more reliable than a scientist that Bernie Sanders relies upon. And we don't get our act together. We're going to be leaving the planet. Our kids and grandchildren are not going to be in good shape. And yet Donald Trump, among others, denies even the reality of climate change, let alone doing something about it. So here we have the, the cancer, the, the cancer of radical Islam and this communist from Brooklyn, Colonel Sanders is illegitimate, is talking about global warming. That's our greatest threat. Okay, so I had to take that one on. Very good. Here's one. Obama's former intelligence director, Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, president's strategy not working. How come he didn't tell us that while he was in, in office? This is the part I don't understand. They all become outspoken the minute they're out. I don't get that. I mean, these guys are tougher than me, smarter than me, taking more danger than me. I get that. But how come when they're in office they don't say Obama's a liar and he's killing us? How come the generals don't stand up as a group and say we've had enough? The man is killing us. We need to do something. That's it. Why don't they say, well, they wait till they get the job on, on MSNBC? More snotty nonsense by, by communists? MSNBC, more snotty nonsense by commies. I'm looking at, at Fox News now with Neil Cavuto, the dumbest man in the history of the media. Idiot. He's interviewing a fake historian. L look what they're doing now. Doris Kearns Goodwin on Donald Trump. Doris Kearns Goodwin is a known plagiarizer. She made herself a presidential historian who got caught stealing stuff. And now he's interviewing her like she's some expert. They did her hair, her makeup, some genius. Doris Kearns Goodwin. And now presidential historian, Miss Goodwin, who was the greatest president in history? Why, that's clear. It was Barack Obama, followed by... Uh, Bill Clinton, if not, well, Bill Clinton could have been number one by my analysis. And who was the worst president? Why, well, that was Ronald Reagan was the worst president in history next to George Washington. My name is Doris Kearns Goodwin, although I've been caught plagiarizing. Pay no attention to it because I'm now invited to Fox News. Look at what they had do. The pearls, everything they pick. They sit in front of a mirror, all selected. The lipstick, what kind of lipstick? Let's see, should I just do a little more red, a little less red? Should I go up on the right side, down on the hair on the left? Or what kind of earrings? Well, that's a little too young looking, though. No, I'm not Ann Coulter. Let, let's not go for the vamp. Let's go a little more. Let's go a little more upscale. Let's go older woman, but not old, not too old. A little older, senior, senior, knowledgeable, but not ancient. No, no, not funereal. No, no, take away the funereal pearls. Nope. We don't want to go all the way out on that one. We're not Nancy Reagan, after all. <laughs> oh, yes. Can bring the uh, iced tea, please? Now, the neckline. Let's deal with the neckline. There's nothing down there to look at, so let's cover it right up. Let's make sure it covers even the neck. Let's even cover the neck. You got a tunic, turtleneck. Turn oh, that was redone. Look like a screw. Like that was definitely surgical. Like turkey gullet taken in. He could use it from Kentucky, Mister Cole. He could use the same surgeon she used on her neck. The gobbler. What's his name? McConnell. McConnell could use the same surgeon. The Doris Kearns Goodwin, presidential historian. Look what they're putting on Fox News. Why don't you put a script under it that says caught plagiarizing? Like in communist China, and they, they bring them back out. A few years later, they're clean. They're cleansed of their record. She's telling me what I should think about Donald Trump. And there's more on Neil Cavuto. Look at him sitting there, idiot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, aha, uh -huh, mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Mm, really. Mm. They taught him how to use his mouth. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's the television mouth. You might believe you're listening to the guest. The smile, the puppet smile, the nice Neil. Come on, Neil. A mortadella has more character than you do. A mortadella in New Jersey has more character than Neil Cavuto. Come on. He doesn't look too good. He's on I think he lost weight. What's with him? Oh, they're still doing Christmas stuff. No radical Islam, nothing. There's like filler. Like today, everyone's doing filler today, December 28th. Technically, I should be off. I don't want to be off. I'm going to walk around Beverly Hills and look in the stores with all the Japanese tourists. Every minute, click, 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 click with the iPhone. Click, click, click. Standing in front of the stores. Click, 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 click. Clicking, picking up the foot with the shoe. I never saw anything like it. A madness, a shopping madness. Actually, they're not the worst anymore. It's not the Japanese. It really isn't. You go down there, you can't believe people. In this day and age, with the world on fire, with the radical...